Mr. Bullock was there for one year. I don't even remember that name. Yep, his name is Tyler Bullock. I called him Tyler once, and he has yeah, because I had like, someone say, like, "Hey, it's called by his first name." And he got really mad. But we didn't do like any more. Like, we had to learn two years worth of math, uh, two years worth of everything in third grade. It's gonna learn second. Oh, I'm sorry. It's okay. Learn from the best. Third grade, right there. She'll catch up. Um, we played Wayside. Like we watch Wayside Story every single day. Hmm. It's every day. Super. Thank you. 
Good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to Revive. It's good to see you here. Um, tonight we're going to be singing um, basically Christmas carols that are kind of made contemporary. So um, we only have three Sundays to sing Christmas songs. So we have to sing them a lot. <laughs> and um, then we're going to be doing, what is it called again? Lectio Divina. New, another churchy word. So, <laughs> so all right. Welcome. Amen. Hey. 
Good evening, everybody. Thank you for being here at our Revive Worship service. Um, I thought I could open up a time to engage with scripture this evening. We'll be reading from the gospel according to Luke, um, the second chapter, the amazing song that Mary sings um, when she's told that she'll be the one to bear Jesus, to bear Emmanuel, the Savior of the world. It's her Magnificat, her song of praise. Um, and to engage with scripture, there are many different ways we can do so. Um, usually on Sunday mornings, you know, someone standing there or in the fancier spot right there and reads the scripture and we say, glory to you, O Lord, or thanks be to God. Um, or we might read scripture at home by ourselves, um, or even <laughs> learn the stories in Sunday school or confirmation. Um, but this style of reading scripture we'll go through tonight is called Lectio Divina, um, which translates to divine reading. Um, it's an ancient Christian practice, and essentially, it's a way to invite God's presence into our hearts as we read the scripture. Um, so I'm gonna read Mary's Magnificat three times, and I'll remind you of all of this as we move through it, so no worries if you forget. But the first time um, will be simply a time to listen to the words. Um, just center yourself and listen to words from Luke. The second time, listen for a word or a phrase that sticks out to you from the reading. Um, it could be just one word or it could be something like God with us, a phrase like that. Um, and then the third time, we'll be invited to use our imaginations to imagine the scene or to think of what images come to mind as we hear the scripture passage. Um, so it's a way to say, God, I'm here, I'm listening to you, and what would you have me glean from this scripture reading tonight? So I invite you to settle into your pew or your comfy chair over there or the tech booth or wherever you're listening to from home. Um, close your eyes or soften your gaze if you'd like to. And here begins the first reading of Mary's Magnificat. Just listen and absorb, no, no expectation. <laughs> the Magnificat, Mary's song of praise. Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God, my savior. For he took notice of his lowly servant girl and from now on, all generations will call me blessed. For the mighty one is holy, and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and haughty ones. He has brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful. He has made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back to her own home. So this second reading, just listen for one word or one phrase. And God, we pray that whatever word or phrase in this passage is speaking to us, you would speak it to us now. The Magnificat, Mary's song of praise. Oh, how my soul praises the Lord. How my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he took notice of his lowly servant girl. And from now on, all generations will call me blessed. 
For the Mighty One is holy, and he has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and haughty ones. He has brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful. For he made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back to her own home. And finally, I invite you to listen for an image, something that the scripture evokes in you, in your imagination, or your memory, or your hope. The Magnificat, Mary's song of praise. Oh, how my soul praises the Lord, how my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he took notice of his lowly servant girl, and from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One is holy. He has done great things for me. He shows mercy from generation to generation to all who fear him. His mighty arm has done tremendous things. He has scattered the proud and haughty ones. He has brought down princes from their thrones and exalted the humble. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away with empty hands. He has helped his servant Israel and remembered to be merciful. For he made this promise to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Mary stayed with Elizabeth about three months and then went back to her own home. Now let us enter a time of prayer. I invite you to assume a posture of prayer. Dear Emmanuel, we gather before you this evening as the nights grow longer and the different obligations we have at work, at school, through church or family or volunteering or whatever other things we are bringing into this sanctuary tonight. We ask you that at least for this moment, at least for these moments together, may we feel that Advent peace, that hope, that love, and that joy that you have promised, that Mary was so blessed and excited about that she burst into this famous song we've read together. We ask you to fill us with good things as well. Ask us to orient our hearts towards your arrival. Help us prepare our hearts, make room for you, and remember the amazing ways you have already shaped our lives. Jesus, I want to pray for every single person in this room, watching on live stream, worshiping together, whether here or online. 
I want to pray for the whole Dawson community, everyone tucked into their homes as the winter chill grows colder, the students finishing up homework before an early morning tomorrow, the teachers and parents and guardians, the people washing dishes or watching Hallmark movies, God, bless all of us and bless the fields as they rest. Thank you for this harvest, this autumn, and orient us now to the long haul of winter and remind us of your hope. God, I want to invite us into a time where we may share together people on our hearts that we are thinking about, people who maybe need a loving word or people who are grieving or suffering, people we know or neighbors abroad. Help us remember those people right now, God. And I want to lift up for our whole community, Kaylee Brent, as she prepares for surgery this week. Emmanuel, we trust that even if we can't remember every name, your Holy Spirit breathes with sighs too deep for words, and every person we pray for is held in your love. God, bless this entire world that you came in the form of a baby to save, came in the form of a human to show us the way. We love you, God, and bless us as we continue in song. Amen. been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Great will be his authority, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness, from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this.
there another song? Oh, I didn't think so. Okay. <laughs> Go and feel free to remain as long as you would like in this holy space. Advent, peace be with you. Amen. Awesome.